what is up everybody it's your girl jada reads here back with another or yeah back with another i'm always mess up these intros <laughs> so let's do it again what is up everybody it's your girl jada reads here aka diamond and we are back with another reading vlog i'm so excited um today is actually march 1st so happy march happy springtime spring is coming spring is on the horizon and that's exciting um and it's my birthday month also happy birthday to me um and also we have cersei it, which is what we're going to be reading for this vlog and it's by madeline miller and um i'm actually really enjoying this for the second go round I didn't get far back when I first bought it and it is one of the books on my books that I must read in 2024. Um, so yeah, I have actually made it to page 77, chapter seven, and I wanted to come and give my initial thoughts on, on this story. Um, so Cersei is um, one of the children to Helios. Um, I, I think that she's something called a nymph. I'm not sure. Um, of course, he has many, many, many children. And I have to go back and to like dig back into more specific details. I read up into page 77 the day before yesterday. So I only have just a few notes here, not a lot, but I know all about Cersei. So to take all, take all the Greek mythology out of it because that stuff can't be confusing, I wanted to just go ahead and discuss what Cersei is about mainly. And it is about the main character, Cersei, who is a daughter, one of the many children of the Greek god Helios. And she is described as being um, not as beautiful as the rest. Her eyes don't glimmer and gleam like the rest of the children. And she has the t most terrible voice ever to all of her siblings and her father and her mother. And she doesn't shine like all of the other gods and goddesses. So that is what she's described as. And no one thinks anything of her at all. She has no great power. She has no good wisdom. And she's just meh, one of my many children, but one of my many children that I sort of have a disdain for um and i don't particularly care to know her all that well that is how she is treated um amongst her family and so she's left to her own devices for the most part she's not really no one's really bothered by her and so what she does is she goes down to the ocean the water around where they are living and she just ponders walks and daydreams about things and then she runs into this mortal and they begin to make friends um his name is glacos um and they become friends he's a fisherman and he tells her about his life in the mortal world and all the things that are expected of him and how his father is abusive and all this stuff and naturally when you are cersei someone who no one pays attention to this one person comes into your life and shows you all this love and admiration and attention that you never felt before you are gullible to that and you want to help and so what happens is she goes to her grandmother and asks her grandmother to help him and her grandmother says no and she's like please and she says okay i'll help him just this once but you have to make me a promise you will not lie with him and she made the promise and she didn't next thing you know he's he comes back and he's so grateful because he knows all the fish and all of the contracts that his family has been rewarded. It has to be because of Cersei and he's just ever so grateful and happy and da 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 and she loves the feeling but she knows she made her grandma promise that she wouldn't lie with him and she didn't. So she goes back to her grandmother and she says please turn him into one of us. Please turn him into a god. And her grandmother's like this blasphemy. We can't do that. He is what he is. And then her brother talked to her, talked to her about something called pl Plancticus, which is like this, um, I'm probably not saying it right, but it's this, um, it's like this, uh, it's like a, oh, why do I call it Plancticus? I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about plankton. <laughs> it's actually called Pharmacaea, and it is this ingredient that comes out of flowers, these special flowers, and she was able to we basically do witchcraft, do magic, and turn turn um, Glaucus into Glaucus into a god, 
and she doesn't know how she was able to do it she doesn't know that there's a name for this and then the rest of the story ensues about what happened what's going on there how she was able to do that I have to also talk to you guys about her brother. It's a lot to the story and I have a lot to say. Um, I just wanted to come in, <clears throat> I just wanted to come in and introduce the vlog, but it's a lot like, it's a lot that has happened in the first seven chapters of the book. And it's a lot to talk about, it's a lot to say about the writing, um, a lot to say about the storytelling in general and how Madeline Miller is just a master of the craft. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I, was clearly about to go in on the story and tell you guys tons and tons of spoilers which if you do not already know I'm gonna tell you something about my videos they will spoil okay so hopefully you've read this story if you have not read this story and you don't want to know you might you might just want to leave just go ahead and leave uh, but if you do want to know about this story and about how I feel about it in in the meantime as well go ahead but I can already get a sense or a feel of what it's going to be going in like how it's going to be more of a like female empowerment tale uh, about taking your power back about understanding your worth and you know not make why is my stuff just started shaking all of a sudden and I, how long has it been shaking y'all but yeah um let me get down to where I'm supposed to be getting down to. But that's the first initial idea and thoughts regarding Cersei. Like I said, I'm gonna be back to talk to y'all about her brother. He plays a, a part in her figuring out who she is. Um, and I think that's important to say. Um, and then we're gonna talk about the repercussions for what she did also. And about how she was made to feel about Glaucus. I have to get his name right. I'll get his name right in a second. But it's spelled, it's spelled, I think it's, I think it's called, yeah, Glaucos. Like glucose, because what he was turned into was like this merman-ish type of creature who, you know, is in the family of Poseidon. And so what I'm thinking about is glucose kind of in a way, kind of related to like uh, photosynthesis, greenness, I don't know. But it's spelled G-L-A-U-C-O-S, Gla or gl gul or gul gulica gulicos or glacos it's got to be glucose or glacos so yeah that's that what are you guys reading so far tell me about it in the comments y'all know i love to talk about things tell me how you're feeling about the month of march tell me about your dreams visions aspirations i don't know just talk to me in the comments about things so far like in this part of the video and then i'll see you guys in the next clip hey girl hey guy hey y'all it's another day for the Cersei vlog but and however I have to inform you guys that I totally finished this damn book I totally finished Cersei did not mean to finish Cersei without giving you guys a one more initial update y'all know I at least have three scenes beginning middle and end baby but when I tell you Cersei by Madeline Miller was amazing. That book was so stinking good. Girl, 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 let me tell you something. I love that book so much. It was so freaking good. I'm trying to see like, okay, how can I, how can I set the scene for you guys because I remember initially what I was saying I was just giving you guys my initial 70 page thoughts flew got back into that book child finished it up so March 1st I gave y'all an update finished it yesterday March 3rd today is March 4th okay so Cersei first of all it's just the feminism of it all it's so good like as you guys know, Cersei is a character in the whole Greek mythology setting in the Odyssey. Odysseus comes across her in the Odyssey, spends 10 years with her and has one child with her. But he doesn't know he has a child with her um, before he leaves to go back home to Penelope. I absolutely do not know the actual story that is in the Odyssey of Cersei and Odysseus. I don't know the the story of Cersei and her dad Helios, God of the Sun, uh, Pasiphae, her sister Persis, Percy, not Perseus, but Perseus, I forgot, but she has the brother, she has Pasiphae, she has the brother, and she has another brother, Aedes. 
I don't know the dynamic and the odyssey of them, but how Madeline Miller put them in the story, girl. So if you don't know, okay, I probably didn't get to this part, but just to speed you guys up, speed it along. Cersei is, like I said, she's the black sheep of the family. No one likes her. Everyone, no one can stand her. They hate the way she talks. Apparently, she doesn't glow. She doesn't shine like the rest of the family. Her eyes do not sparkle. She's very dull. That is how she is described in the book. However, as we get to know her more and as she gets her suitors, she we learn different aspects about Cersei and why the gods which are the Olympians and the Titans they're classified as those two types why they feel the way they feel about Cersei so what happens is Glaucos is a sh um, just like a regular average mortal and he comes to um, where uh, Cersei lives and is like fishing and da 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 and he comes to see her and they gather they gain a friendship amongst each other and they really really start to like each other but nothing like happens between them but as I said before Cersei goes and begs her grandmother for this initial thing regarding Glaucos and then that happens and then she's still more and more in love because no one else no one else has shown her the attention that Glaucos has shown her and so what she decides to do is go up into the mountains or what have you around her home and she picks this particular plant that's like a part of the uh Planticus, I forgot what it was called, group or whatever, and it's able to do something as regarding magic if you have the power in you. And so, for some odd reason or another, Cersei decides to try this out on Glaucos, and Glaucos actually changes into a god after that. And that is when Cersei learns that she has some sort of gift that she didn't know she had, and no one else knows that she had. And then she thinks that Glaucos is going to, you know, be with her as as she thought. But like all things with Cersei, Cersei's kind of gullible and how Pasifaye it describes her is she is weakened to mortals for some odd reason or another probably because none of the gods pays her any mind and mortals really thinks highly of her because, you know, they're just a mortal and she's a god. So he ends up falling in love with Scylla and instead of wanting to be with um instead of wanting to be with Cersei and which is not a terrible thing in Glaucus's eyes because in Glauc Glaucus's eyes he only saw Cersei as a sister yeah right whatever the case may be so Cersei this begins to really hone in on her sorcerer skills and powers and she turns Scylla into this god awful monster and after she turns Scylla into this god awful monster with like six legs and five heads and da 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 she is um Aedes comes in which is her baby brother and tells her all along you know you're a witch and I'm a witch too and we're sorcerers and da da da, -da this and that and so what ends up happening is they tell Aedes tells their father because he didn't believe Cersei in the first place and then Aedes um then goes into I mean and then not the, Aedes Helios then goes to tell Zeus about everything because he has to step to Zeus first you know and just tell him like here this is what my son said and he said that th my daughter has this power as well and what do we need to do about it da 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 and then he comes back and then it's like okay we've struck um we struck this car is like was like getting over on me we struck a deal Zeus and I struck a deal and they they end up banishing Cersei though however Aedes and Cersei and all of them they can have their powers da 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 da, da it's cool but because Cersei admitted to what she did to Glaucus and what and what she did to Celia she ends up having to be banished to the island of uh, 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 what is it called uh, uh, Aya uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I knew the name because I looked it up uh, Aya Aya Island A-A-I-A Aya Island and it becomes her island and then the story ensues from there and you can only imagine what happens after that it's all of these characters start coming to her throughout the story and that's how you get these different interwoven narratives of different spun or retold stories of the Odyssey and that is how Madeline Miller works her magic and when I say 
it's so reminiscent of um achilles the song of achilles it's so good madeline miller is so good at what she does the the first of all Cersei as her, a character of her own in and of itself is just like this this woman who you who you look up to like she comes into her own being she comes into her power she comes into her femininity into her womanhood and when she decides to turn these sailors and pirates into pigs of all things is just so good like that is exactly what you men need to be turned into that wrong women pigs because that is what you are and then there's a moment in the story where Cersei even says men are not even good at being pigs that's how like low to the ground a lot of these males are in life and it's just like Madeline Miller gets it sis really gets it she really understood the assignment I absolutely love the story Daedalus's story interwoven into that the um I love Odysseus's story interwoven into Cersei's story I love Tele Telemongus and Telenagus which is her son is Telenagus Telemongus is um Penelope and Odysseus's son together and I love that story and how she brought it in there it just is a magnificent tale and it's honestly once again think I'm think it's going to be one of my top reads of 2024 like I I, I cannot stop with the five star reads like your girl is on a roll and I'm not I'm not sad about it okay I'm not sad about it not in the least bit I'm actually overjoyed over the moon with joy and excitement that I keep on picking up banger after banger after banger after banger like I just love it I love that book so much I continue to think about it I know I'm continuously thinking about it because I only just finished it on yesterday but it's just really that girl Cersei is that girl and if you haven't read Cersei I think you should read Cersei it's magnificent it's magnificent excellently told beautifully written makes me want to write retail retail a part of the the Greek Greek mythology I probably I could never I could never but she <laughs> Madeline makes me feel like I can <laughs> um but yeah I wanted to just come in and talk about that story because I loved it so much and I also finished that out and then go into the second book um, I don't know if I'm gonna finish this book in this um, in this vlog, but I did decide to pick up uh, Titus Grown by Mervyn Peak um, and start read. I started reading this this morning, and I I've only made it to page 22, and it's because girl, it's super dense. It's so many words on the page, but let's go ahead and give an intro to Titus Grown. Okay, so. Titus Grown is a part of the Gormenghast trilogy written by Mervyn Peake. Uh, this one was actually published in 1946 and it is about this like magical house, this kingdom that is only this house, which is the Gormenghast mansion. Um, the Gormenghast like world, the Gormenghast mansion. And Titus Grown is the heir to the Gormenghast fortune, mansion, all encompassing everything of the sort. And this book begins with um, Titus Grown being born. And it's like, you know, go tell it on the mountain, the new Lord or the heir to the Gormenghast throne has been born. And his name is Titus, Titus Grown. And that is all I know so far about the book. But what I do, what I can tell you after only reading 22 pages, what I definitely can say is that Mervyn Peak has to be a master of atmosphere, like atmospheric. The book is very atmospheric, very dark, but in a light sort of way. The characters that I've met so far, uh, Spec Specul Crave, I've met Specul Crave. He is the curator of the mansion. I've met Mr. Frey. He is the hand basically to the Earl Gormenghast, Titan's father. And th those are all I've met. And I've met 
characters that won't have anything to say that are basically mute and the way that he talks about the mute characters in the kitchen and how they have only been bred and born to work in the kitchen to scrub the walls to make them new to make them look stainless like steel and the talking not the talking but like the moving parts of the mansion and the to be a fly on the wall the way it's written is very is very descriptive like the descriptions of this mansion thus far in the first 22 pages sets you up it puts me in the mind of the mansion in um, the Beauty and the Beast movies um, and how everything is fantastical and has all the little tiny pieces all the little tiny things have a piece a piece or a place um, in that mansion and have something to say are and are there for a reason that is that is how I feel about Mervyn Peake's writing and the Gormagas mansion it's excellent it is excellent it is it is excellent I can't I don't have any other words to say about it right now okay sorry 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 so I'm gonna have to read some more so I can come and talk to you guys more um, about it but I'm glad that I decided to pick this up. And like I said, I meant to read this in for the fall, but whatever, now we're about to be on the peak of springtime. And it's perfect for that as well. I am really into this. I really, really like it a lot. Um, and what also made me go ahead and pick it up is because I also watched The Library of a Lambyrith. Um, her recent reads, she just finished Gormenghast itself, which is the second installment of the Gormenghast trilogy. And it was just like, okay, girl, I gotta pick the, I gotta read Titus Grown now because of the way that she's describing Gormenghast itself, which I've also heard from another creator that Gormenghast itself is definitely a book to be reckoned with. Like, it's amazing. So, to get to Gorman Gas itself, I have to go ahead and read Titus Grown first. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. So, I just had an interview and it's very promising. I'm not going to say too much else about it, but I decided that since the interview went so well, I wanted to go ahead and, um, I wanted to go ahead and I wanted to get me some coffee from somewhere and dive back into this. I want to dive back into this and read some more of this. So that is where we are headed now. We're going, I don't, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know if I'm going to my, one of my favorite cafes, a different cafe, a new cafe. I don't know, but we're going to go somewhere and just get, get a little bit more reading done. I really want to get to page 100 um, today. That is a, definitely a goal of mine to at least get to page 100. So that's what I want to do. So that's what, we're, that's what we're gonna do. I'm so sad that I didn't get to like come in and talk about Cersei more. Um, I absolutely love that book. I absolutely love that book, and I have it. Of course, there's no reason to keep it on me anymore because I'm done reading it. But um, there's absolutely yeah, there's absolutely no reason for that. But I have just a couple of passages that I would like to have shared with you guys that I did tab. But when I say it was so, it was such a great read that, excuse me, it was, it was so good of a read that I couldn't even, I refused to even stop and write down as much as I would write down in books. I just wanted to keep going, keep going, keep going. I hadn't had a book in so long that made me want to just keep going um and not stop i'm lying i just read assassin's apprentice and assassin's apprentice was like that also but it was a different type of atmosphere at the same time it wasn't it wasn't the it wasn't the exact same as cersei though cersei was more befitting for who i am now assassin's apprentice kind of more so speaks to who i was as a child and that's why i was so engulfed in it as a child i mean in it now because it, it reminded me of when i was a kid and the excitement that i felt as a kid um but most definitely not um oh i can't go there most definitely i haven't been to this spot in so long we're gonna go to city and state have not been there in forever it's been so many years. Well, no, it hasn't. It's been one year. And I'm close by it, and I just want to go ahead and go get out the car and enjoy this fresh air. It is 82 degrees outside. 
uh, I gotta be able to sit outside for at least an hour, you know? But anyway, yeah, Cersei kind of, that, that's a fantasy that kind of speaks to who I am as a grown woman. And that's why I was so, um, that's why I was so freaking excited to keep on reading it because it was just amazing in that way. All of the, all of the different metaphors and just the literature itself, the way it was written, it really spoke to things that are going on, you know, in the world today. And to just be a woman today, Madeline Miller definitely knew what she was doing. And to choose Cersei of all people, it made me want to learn more about Cersei and who she was as a character in the whole like Greek mythology era. If that makes sense. Um, oh, it's a rocky road I'm on. Jesus. Y'all see the camera shaking? It's the road, baby. It's the road. Um, should I go? Can I keep straight? It doesn't make sense to do that. No. Okay, I gotta turn around. So, yeah, as I said, that's what we're about to do. Go read some more. I'll read some more and then I will definitely have some updates for you. More than just what I just said, but I think also Titus Grown definitely shaping up to be one of my favorite reads of the year. So I'm really excited about that. And yeah, so I will talk to you guys in the next clip. I have something else to say to you guys in the next clip. A day and a half later and she speaks and she speaks about Titus Grown. I have this much left. As you guys can see, I'm almost near done. Um, and I, I have some thoughts. I have a lot to say about this Gormenghast trilogy that is Titus Grown um, by Mervyn Peake. All right, so if you are, if you have made it to the tail end of this vlog that has to me been kind of all over the place, um, I spoke to you guys briefly on Monday about the fact that I was gonna start reading um, Titus Grown, which is the first installment of the Gorman Gas trilogy by Mervyn Peake. Um, I think this was, let's see originally published Titus Grown first published in 1946 so this is an old one this is the old one so first of all let's talk about comparisons so this is compared to um the Hobbit right yeah this is compared to the Hobbit and Tolkien's Lord of the Rings trilogy um, and that kind of sort of fantastical fantasy element, that, that sort of world. Um, but I have to say, this is a stand, this stands on its own and it is far, far away from Tolkien's um, world. It's completely different. It is completely absurd. It is weird. It is fantastic. It is grotesque. And it's unlike anything I have ever read before in my life. And I have to tell you guys, I'm super shocked at how engulfed I was in this novel for it to have been written so long ago. Um, I've been reading it nonstop since Monday. Today is Thursday. And I do plan on finishing it today. Um, and I just, I just really, really like it it's good like i think i feel like autumn would like this i feel like my child would like it probably not at nine but maybe when she turns like 12 or something like that i think she would get a kick out of reading this honestly um so i have to say first off before i go into uh the characters and everything like that i have to talk about the style of this and I have done a bit of research on Mervyn Peake I've done enough research to know that he's actually a painter he was a painter and an illustrator and he was most known for that part of his life and you can tell that he was a painter um that he liked to draw and paint and and, and do those things and like imagine what his next 
art piece would be about based on the way that he describes the scenes in this novel. If you are someone who likes a more straight to the point, a more predictable story where he, the writer outright tells you about each character and their motives and things like that and then tells the story ap thereafter, this will not be something for you. And that's where I find the difference between um, The Hobbit or Lord of the Rings and something like this. They are completely different. Um, here on the back, for example, it says, Many readers admire Tolkien's Lord of the Rings, but fans of Mervyn Peake's Titus trilogy maintain that this extravagant epic about a Lambeth um, castle populated with con conniving Dickinson grotesques in the true fantasy classic of our time. As you can tell, it's completely different. So he, Peake does this thing where leading up to what he's about to expose, regarding any particular character. He probably takes a paragraph or even a page and describes every sort of aspect of the room, of the stairs, of the clothing that the character is wearing, the way that they walk, the way that they talk, or the fact that they might cough <laughs> before they have something to say, or the idea that they might have a little bit of like a mousy type of voice. And he, he even makes up his own words to describe these characters and their flaws and their quirks and it's just a very 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 interesting book there's one my favorite character is dr Prum squalor and he literally has a little laugh of some sort before or after he has something to say and i can just imagine what he would look like if they were to make a movie about this um about this book um and so that's something that's to note basically it's a very 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 descriptive book it's a very descriptive novel this is the unabridged version which is 396 pages um when and when the pages look like this this is what the pages look like 396 and so they have they have produced the unabridged version which is about they say five hours five or six hours long but if you were to do this on audio it would be presented as like 17, 18 hours. So the unabridged version basically took out basically all of the descriptions that Mervyn Peake initially put. And I think if you're gonna read this or the trilogy at large, you should read the unabridged version because it's very rewarding in its atmosphere. And then we can go into atmosphere. So this is, to me, it's very, it's fantastic. It's fantastical. Like I said, Mervyn Peake makes up his own words. Each character has this, the weirdest names ever. You have Steer Pike, you have Dr. Prune Squalor, you have um, the Earl, Titus's father, Sceptral Crave, you have Titus, and then you have Grown, Titus Grown, the Grown family. Um, you have Fuchsia, which is his sister, and she loves actually to wear pink. Um, you have the mother Gertrude, the sisters. Um, what are the twin sisters' names? I totally forgot their names. Carol and Clarice. Carol and Clarice. You have Rotcod. You have um, Sweltzer, Flay. All of these different names, and they, they symbolize something in particular. So I haven't done a, like in depth research regarding exactly what the mirror to this tale is about but i can only imagine that it's regarding the monarchy in britain in the uk and this is definitely like a critique on the monarchy and its old systems and rituals there's a lot of rituals in this book that that they have to that the family has to do daily that the earl the father has to do daily where things have to be in a specific type of order everyone has to be arranged a specific type of way when they're maybe having breakfast or when it's time to i don't know a funeral or some sort of something like that everything has to be specific to what their books have been written on or the past earls um, and leaders of the castle have written. That's how everything kind of has to go. And so he definitely has to be critiquing the idea that to hell with the monarchy, they should have been gone a long time ago. And for him to have written this in 19, or published this in 1946, that, has some, that says something about what people used to feel about Great Britain and um, you know Queen Elizabeth's father and all of those people back in those days. 
and it's only the same now like why do you guys still have a king please make me understand why do you guys still have a king <laughs> a king a monarchy a prince princesses and all this stuff it's very odd it's very strange and very weird and they're colonizers and they're thieves you know and so it kind of speaks to that and then there's this character whom actually I quite like even though he's definitely the villain of this story you can't help but admire his cunning ways and his swindling to make it to where he wants to be in life in this castle the castle by the way the gormenghast castle so this is titus grown and he is the heir to the gormenghast castle which is offset on its own it's basically like it's this gigantic enormous castle that surrounds this land and there is nothing else around for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles so we don't hear anything else about any part of the world besides gormenghast castle and then there are the dwellings on the outside of the castle that's all we know that's all you're introduced to as far as the world is concerned and for about 100 to 150 pages in there's descriptions of all the different types of characters that i just named and the dwellings that are outside of the castle and he's definitely painting the picture of what the castle is and what it looks like and how they live in the castle and what all of the characters live and do and how they think how they breathe how they talk how they act what they wear it's just awesome this book is just amazingly weird and i'm absolutely obsessed with it so to go into that character i was telling you guys about he totally reminds me of um the the um hillary mantel's um trilogy the wolf hall trilogy and and and, and what's his name um thomas Crim cornwall what's his name what is that guy's name? I've only read one of the books. I read um, Bring Up, is it Bring Up the Bodies? Yeah, I've only read Bring Up the Bodies, which is the second book. And it's mainly about Anne Boleyn and her execution. Um, but Thomas Cromwell is the character who rose from nothing um, and who is basically what those books are about. He's the, he's the narrator or he's the person that we're following throughout those three those three um grand novels yeah thomas cromwell so steer pike is definitely thomas cromwell in my personal opinion um because if you guys know anything about cromwell he just came from out of nowhere no one really knows exactly where he came from but he rose to such immense power from all of his cunning thievery trickery up until he worked his way into and to become like the hand to the king and you weren't even born he wasn't even born into wealth money no status whatsoever and to get that far in life it was just amazing you know and it's amazing to read about that's steer pike in this story so steer pike is most definitely the main character in this novel and he's a kitchen boy at the beginning of the story and he has gotten so far as to i feel like he's about to swindle flay out of his seat uh, flay is the he's like the hand to the earl of gormangas he's the hand to lord sep du crave and um he's like the first assistant very important person and i feel like mr flay is about to lose his position and i truly feel like gertrude i haven't gotten to that part yet but i think gertrude who is the lady who is lady grown she's gonna definitely put steer pike in his place and something's gonna happen to laura self you crave and i'm feeling like maybe in book two gormangast itself i think steer pike is probably going to be over or beside a little bit titus as titus grows into his own person that's the way i think everything is going but basically i see steer pike as a thomas cromwell figure um what else do i have written down here um there's definitely some really good passages um in this story as well the dwellers let's go i wrote something about page i have Let me see. Where did I, why did I write page 71 down? Hmm. I put Mrs. Slag by Moonlight goes to the dwellers. Yeah. Oh, that was basically my, right, me trying to like figure out 
what is it exactly that um, Mervyn Peake is trying to tell us about this story? Like, is this a connection between the monarchy that was back then and, and now? And it was basically set upon this idea that the nanny, Nanny Slag, who is the nanny to both Fuchsia and Titus Grown, how she, the way that she talks to Titus, the way that she talks to Fuchsia, the way that she holds them near and dear to her heart as if she's birthed these children herself and the pedestal in which she puts them is insane to me because she can't, she can't separate herself when she's not around. So she had to go to the dwellers or the dwellings, which is outside of the castle to find, is that you Autumn? Okay, um, to go to the, she had to go outside the council to find a wet nurse for Titus because, of course, you know, the lady was not going to nurse him. So she had to go and find a wet nurse, and she finds this woman named Ketta. But before Ketta comes on her own fruition, the way that she talks to the dwellers is just like you're one of them. You are one of them and you can't remove yourself from your job for one second to talk to these people with more dignity and have disdain for their situation. And she talked down on them and she talked about how you all should be glad and happy that there has been an heir to be born. Don't you get food thrown from the balconies to you every day? And I was like, thrown from the balconies? He's most definitely, you know, he's got to be talking about the monarchy here and how some people who work inside the palace are probably brainwashed as to think that they actually derive from this bloodline because they've been working for the system for so long that they can't remove the two but someone like steer pike like i said you can't help but admire steer pike because he has a motive and his motive is clean and clear and he wants to get straight to the point. He wants to have power. He wants to sustain his lifestyle. He wants money and you can't you can't be mad at him for it. And he's willing to do any and everything to get to where he wants to go. Now, he's not like I said, he's my favorite character for those reasons, but I don't really agree with I don't really agree with his way of doing things. I feel like there could have been a better way to do things, but then you wouldn't have this amazing story to get lost in if he was doing it or going about things better so yeah all in all as you guys can tell fantastic fan freaking tastic i'm going to finish this up probably taking me about an hour to read the last 100 pages um well the last 96 pages and i'm going to definitely come back to you guys with an update of what happens when we make it to the end but all in all i am happy as hell that i read this book the way that the library of labyrinth talks about this that's her channel it's called the library of a lamb a labyrinth um or the the labyrinth of a library one or the other i always get it confused um the way that she talks about this the way that jess at sunbeam jess those are only two people that i follow personally that have read Titus grown and at this particular point both of them have also read Gorman Gast itself which I'm definitely going to be reading that next it's amazing it's a very rewarding it's very rewarding to have made it through something like this because as I said the descriptions if you're somebody who is in a rush you won't get past the first 50 to 100 pages because he is so detailed in his description and the painting of the castle itself that you would you would get tired of it but for someone like me you know I don't have to rush through anything if anything I like to sit with novels novels books in general like I said they paint the, they paint my life you know outside of the hecticness that is this crazy little life very crazy to be able to sit somewhere quietly and just like soak up what is this fantasy this fantasy world and just like forget about everything else that you have going on it's so rewarding and anyone who appreciates literature you understand what i mean if you really appreciate it for what it is i think you would truly enjoy something like this like seriously you really would um there's no you don't even like it it's just great it's just great the sentences are just chef's kiss um so yeah that's my update here i had to come and give you guys an update i was just telling autumn how oh my gosh i hate coming on camera when i'm done reading like i hate that i finished cersei so quickly where i give you guys at least one more breakdown of the book you know because it's done now it's over um and it was excellent but mm. I should have came and talked to you guys but I was so fascinated with it but I said let me just go ahead and come talk and then finish so now I'm going to go ahead and finish the book now 
and I'll see you guys in the next clip. Okay, what is up vlog? Coming to you with low energy the same day as earlier. Um, I, just, I finished I finished Titus Grown and I wanted to just come and just go ahead and talk about it and wrap up this video. But I've actually, I've literally, when I got off the camera, the last clip, got in a bed and read all the way up into the final two chapters, got up, got ready to go to the gym. I've gone to the gym, I've worked out, I've had five guys, I've had a shower, <laughs> came home, had my shower after I ate, finished the book. And I wanted to go ahead and just come and wrap up the video. I just said that, didn't I? Anywho's phenomenal. <laughs> this is probably another one of my favorite books of the year. Like, are you joking? I I just I am winning across the board when it comes to these these reads, these classics. The classics are re making having a rena renaissance in my life. They are bringing meaning to a life that otherwise, like, I don't know. Y'all know how we get, you know, sometimes it's wonderful, it's a beautiful life. Other times it's just like existentialism at best, at its peak. Um, but the books are giving me so much perspective and they are bringing things they're making things come full circle for me um i absolutely loved this book the ending how mervyn peak wrapped this up let me tell y'all something the thing that is so phenomenal about all these books that i'm reading um that are old school that are classics is that these authors really know how to bring a story home they really know how to bring a story home. They don't leave any gaps unfilled. They don't leave anything to question. Like as as in things that you read early on in the book. I was it was certain things that happened early on in the novel that I was like, "Okay, okay. Is he going to bring this back up? Is he going to like finish this story? Is he going to finish this duo? Is are they going to fight? What are they going to do?" Like I haven't heard him talk. I haven't heard him talk about this character. Where is where, where is this going? Is he, is he going to let me down? No. Mervyn Peake does not let you down. He brings it all back around full circle towards the end of the novel. And he ties every loose end that you will consider untied up. He ties them all up. Puts a bow on them. Shines them up. And he sends you on your way ready to pick up Gorman Gas itself, which is book two. And I'm so excited. That's another book that I've just ordered off Amazon because I found this book secondhand. But I, who is to say I'm going to show up to, you know, one of my favorite secondhand bookshops and I'll see Gorman Gas. No, I got to have it and I got to have it now. So I did order it. Um, I actually ordered it before I finished the book because I knew I was going to want to read it. But everything is just it's just phenomenal this is one of the best fantasies i've ever read in my life published in, like i said in 1946 that is something to say about this writing his writing style the storytelling the characters are probably going to live on inside of my head for forever um I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. I can't wait to see what happens with Titus next. We end off this novel with Titus being just shy of one year. He's a year old. People die. Um, Steer Pike is up to his nuance, no goodness. Um, and I'm ready to see what happens next with Steer Pike. I'm ready to see if you should grow up and come into her own even more. I'm even interested in Gertrude, who is Countess, uh, Countess Grown, uh, Titus's mom. Um, it's just a phenomenal story. I said most of what I needed to say in the last clip, but I just wanted to come back and just let you guys know that it did not disappoint. The ending did not disappoint, and I'm really excited to see what's going to come next. Five star read. I highly recommend it. Um, only to those people who can who can stand to read tons and tons of descriptions 
um, and who who is action packed. Trust me, when we get to those scenes, when there's some action, when there's some combat, when there's some fighting, those are the longest chapters because he he slowly winds up and bends and maneuvers around what's about to come and what we've all been waiting on. We've been waiting on this fight. So he gave a good fight. Mervyn Peake is something else. He is something else. This man's imagination, I I don't know. I have a wild imagination, but I don't think I could ever paint a scene the way he has painted these scenes in this story. I don't think I could ever come up with some sort of castle the way that he came up with Gorman Gas. Like, where did this come from? You guys talk about Lord of the Rings so much in The Hobbit, which I love those movies, <laughs> but they're movies. I think I read somewhere or excuse me I saw somewhere someone say you know they're amazing right Tolkien is amazing Lord of the Rings The Hobbit amazing books amazing books and then they belong to everyone because those books were made into film for the world but it's something else to say about Titus Grown and Gorman Gast and Titus Alone those are for the soul those are for the individual and to know those is to have to have read them and to understand what what people say when they talk about Titus and when they talk about Prune Squalor and Sup Your Crave and all these people. You have to have read the book to really understand the true meaning of that fantasy world, this fantasy world. And I understand it now. For a year, just about a year now, I've been listening to people talk about this book and how amazing it was to them and how you just want to be wrapped up and enveloped in the sentences that Mervyn Peake um, writes and how you know it's just it's just something to read and now I finally read it and now I finally see I finally understand and now I want everybody else to read it so they can understand too so if you like fantasy if you like Harry Potter if you like Lord of the Rings you would love this book I think you would I really think you would love it um you you really have to love reading though to really read something like this I, I have to make sure I say this as a disclaimer you can't just be reading just to be reading you know just to read and to share on the internet it can't be like one of the newer it can't be like it's not like the new stuff okay it's not it's not anything new it's not anything short okay I've read longer novels that didn't take as long as this is what I'm trying to say like the descriptions are crazy and really to say that this book is 396 pages yeah it is 396 pages however it's been condensed the way that it's been formatted here makes it 396 pages but it's really it's really really long and I can tell that I've been so I've been so uh devoted to this because I haven't watched any tv for the last two and a half days i haven't watched any youtube you know what i mean that's how i know i've really literally i've literally spent all of my time reading this book and i just want to make that disclaimer first but like i said still if you're a fantasy lover seriously i think you will really enjoy something like this and you would appreciate it when you're done so yeah that's that that's Titus grown that's thirsty that's the end of this vlog i'll see you guys in the next upload thank you so much for watching deuces